Bam. Welcome back to Burn the Ship, the podcast where we connect entrepreneurs to professionals to help you go all in on your business. I'm your host, Ezra Brown. Without further ado, I'm allowing my guest to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Craig McElvain. I'm the founder of Craig Ads, and we're a digital marketing agency that services franchise brands and uh, local service businesses. Man, that's awesome. Craig, I appreciate you coming and sitting down with me first and foremost. We definitely got a got a back relationship in the past and networking and having a very uh, common network, but Craig kind of gives a story. I know I know a little bit of your story, but I would want the people to kind of know, walk us through what, what this journey's been like for you, how, how it became Craig Ads, what the professional life started like, and to where it is now. Well, uh, it starts with uh, my psychology degree. I originally wanted to get into clinical psychology, and I realized, no, I don't. <laughs> and uh, also in terms of uh, the other direction you could go in psychology is you could go down a research route. And that I also realized, okay, eight years of school, probably not going to do that. What I did instead is I got a master's in human behavior, which is at University of Southern California. Uh, and that dives into consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. And it dives into how to apply consumer behavior in marketing. Uh, how do you ch tailor the message? How do you tailor that for uh, you know, the right emotion right. for the for the time, right. right time and place? How do you target your and segment your customers? So that's what that degree really focused in on. From there, I knew that I was obviously marketing has been going more and more into a digital landscape. Uh, so my first role was actually a very humble job after college. Uh, so I was serving a commercial real estate agency in uh, Los Angeles, helping mm -hmm. them with their in-house marketing, help them with social media posting, help them with Google Ads, manage the website for them. And that's really where I cut my teeth on marketing. Uh, over time, I decided, okay, I want to be closer to family. I want to get, uh, I want to get more experience. Uh, and also cost of living. So guess what my rent was in Santa Monica? What year? That was 2013. Probably north of two grand. Uh, good news, it was less than that, actually. Really? Yeah, it was 1350 It was a, But it was only a studio. So that means no bedrooms. Oh. It's just one single room. Just open kitchen and yeah. bedroom roll in one, <laughs> one spot. So the first thing I did, you know, this is, uh, this is 2013, 2014, Craig. Uh, so I said, you know what? Let's work for the same company. Let's go to the Texas location. Yeah. So guess what happened to my cost of living when it went to Texas? Went down a little bit or went up? Uh, no, it went down tremendously. Yeah, I was about to say. So my rent for a one bedroom, no longer a studio, was $700. Okay. That's awesome. That is, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so that would taught me a lot about economics. <laughs> Uh, but uh, also, uh, for me, that helped to diversify even more. I'm originally from Illinois, then went to California. So now I'm taking a Greyhound bus because I wanted to save money. That was a mistake. Never take a Greyhound bus. Always fly. Uh, but uh, went to Texas after that. Uh, and then f from there, went on to Georgia went on to Georgia. Uh, now it's in Georgia where I really got my experience serving local businesses. So uh -huh. that was working for a company called Kigo, Q-I-I-G-O. Okay. Uh, and that company has since been sold by Rick Batchelor, but uh, man, well, he built an amazing company during the time that he was running that company. Right. Uh, and the, the focus of that company was around customer service for franchises. Okay. And for me, that's also where I cut my teeth on serving others. Before I had ever been part of an agency, I would have, if you, if you can believe this, I'm actually an introvert. I know you're looking at me. We've been, we've interacted at BNI. Say, yeah, we've interacted uh, yeah. at BNI a lot together. We've interacted in a lot of situations. You're like, okay, Craig's an extrovert. No, I'm living proof that an introvert can be made into an extrovert, yeah. uh, based on the life experiences that you have. So my experience working for that commercial real estate business was all hands on, all the data. My experience at Kigo was serving franchisees. And what that composure was, was basically back-to-back -back calls. You had about maybe 200 accounts that were on you at any given time. Some some account managers had more. Uh, but uh, that basically means hour to hour, you're having calls with franchisees. And it's talking to them about their pay search performance, talking to them about SEO. Now, fortunately, it's all composed around a single brand. So it might be a commercial cleaning brand, or it might be a painting brand, but it's all going to be all franchisees within that brand. Right. But what that taught me was, uh, by talking to all of those entrepreneurs uh, and also so, uh, working under Rick, uh, I, I built a passion for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, so that made me long term very interested in supporting local businesses when I went on to, to start Craig Ads. Right. Uh, but where I cut my teeth, where I got my, my most experience was definitely at Kigo okay. uh, during that time. 
Uh, Kigo, since then, to be transparent about what's happened uh, since the acquisition, that focus on customer service just isn't there anymore. Right, and that's probably one of their big pillars they leaned on mm-hmm. to help their business. Like so that. when I first started with them, you know, we were maybe three account managers. I helped that company get to 10 account managers, and we trained all of those account managers. Right. Um, so have I had a lot of experience knowing what are the things that matter to a local business owner and uh, taking the time to make sure that they're successful. And that really is the big thing, taking time. Most agencies today are focused on how do we quickly deliver a product and have it packaged and then never talk about it again. Right. <laughs> because if we talk about it for too long, it takes time, which means right. it costs us money, which means our price goes up or which something else happens. Right. So I found that sweet spot to help a local business owner or a franchisee to be able to, to save their time and also still get the most value out of what I do. All right, man, that's awesome. See, I see, I completely forgot. See, I knew you went to USC. I didn't know that you had lived out there. So. Yeah, you know, living out there and then going to Texas and then coming to Georgia. That's a big, you know, that's, that's a big, cultu- ba- that's a big that balance. cultural diversity. Uh, very, very. <laughs> you lived in the most extreme of two states possible. Absolutely. <laughs> and coming from Illinois uh, as well. So you know, Illinois, Texas, you know, California, Georgia. Uh, what I love about Georgia is it is a good blend of a lot of those cultures. Right. Uh, which is really good. And cost of living, still similar to Texas. And that for, a little bit of state taxes. but Right. right. Uh, it's not, not yeah. terrible. We, 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 <laughs> get, we get around uh, where, the, where, where all the states would go, not too bad in terms of uh, right. the well, state taxes go. Well, paint me a picture. You know, um, I know about you. I know some of your clients. But what is uh, – paint me a picture for your ideal client. What, what are you looking for? So my ideal customer today <laughs> is actually a local business owner, standalone business that does home services. Mm-hmm. That's where most of my experience was when serving on, uh, as an account right, manager. You were at Floor Coverings International for a while, weren't you? I was also at Floor Coverings International and supported franchises there as well. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, what was great about that experience while we're talking about Floor Coverings International was looking at things from a holistic side. So I came in from a digital marketing side all the way up until 20. 22, 2021 timeframe. Uh, and that was a great opportunity to look at the holistic marketing, look at the marketing budget for a franchisee right. and understand how digital fits into that. Uh, transparently, there was also an opportunity, and I'll, I'll leave this agency unnamed for the, for their benefit, but uh, I was also on the receiving end of the service from another agency. And mm-hmm. it was really helpful for me to understand what was the impact of what that, those account managers were doing uh, or not doing. Right. And also, I felt I really felt bad for some of those account managers because there right. was no way that they could feasibly do the job they needed to do as an agency either. Right. Too few of account managers, not enough training, probably not highly paid paid individuals to be able to provide the the service level that a franchisee is ultimately going to need. Right. If you put yourself in the mindset of a franchisee, this is somebody who, in most cases, they've invested their 401k into this business. Right. And the end results that they get for some agencies is, yes, sir, may I take your order? Right. And not <laughs> at Chick-fil-A service is great. Yeah. But you also have to talk strategy and you also have to be able to be present for longer than that five minute conversation. Right. Right. It's got to be it's got to be there through the whole time of a relationship. You right. want it to really, really burn, get some burn in there. That's awesome. You know, and then you've had Craig Ads. How long? How long has it been since the since the uh, I guess the birthday of Craig Ads? So Craig Ads uh, unofficially started in January of 23 is when I got my first customer and officially started in April of 23. That's when the LLC was formed. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's been about a year and a half. That's awesome, man. That's awesome because I definitely say uh, I've watched you grow a little bit through the time because I met you early in my uh, in my sales journey here through networking and it's been uh, been a pleasure to watch you grow from our group to another group. About 70 people had to get in. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) But no, tell me, uh, how have you grown your business through the last year and a half? So uh, ironic, as it will sound, uh, as opposed to using digital marketing for growth, it has primarily been through referrals. Right. So uh, I have to give a testimony to, to BNI. BNI is an amazing organization for getting those referrals. Probably represents about 30% of my business. The rest of it comes from standalone referrals from yeah. customers that I service today. And they say, hey, you got to talk to Craig. Right. No, <laughs> and that's a, that says a lot about you as a person and the work you do yeah. for people. Because, you know, if you're serving people the right way, they will all always put it on to you and especially you being in Carrollton that's where I went to college yep. shout out West Georgia um, but 
where you're at in Carrollton, though, it's a small town cookie cutter community. Like if you do one person wrong, everybody there would know, you know. <laughs> but if you do yeah. the right thing, everybody there is going to know, and they're going to refer you to their business. Your franchise communities are the same way. You right. serve uh, one franchisee wrong, they're going to talk about it with the rest of the franchisees. It's right. not going to go well for you, right? And, then that, and that's <laughs> thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, that that is off the table. You know, and then what would you say? Um, Franchise wise, because um, that's a little bit different than the consumer side of the market where they're smaller business going mm-hmm. into it. What would you say the franchise world? Um, what's different about that type of digital marketing than marketing for your mom and pop flower shop? Well, it's important for a supplier in that situation to be a good steward to both the franchisee and the franchisor. Okay, and that is a very, I think any franchisor, if you were to get them into a conversation on this, they'll be very passionate about this topic. Right, franchisees, they're going to be very passionate about this topic. Right. Suppliers are also very passionate, and uh, there is a three way relationship. Relationship right. that goes on with that, and so it's really important to follow brand standards mm-hmm. as uh, as a as a supplier. It's really important to have a good relationship with the brand and understand what the what the vision is right. for the success for those franchisees. It's also equally important to be present for those phone calls with franchisees mm-hmm. and to hear them to right. listen to what's happening on the ground for them and to make changes according to what's happening for them. Right. Uh, and also to have helpful suggestions. What's What are those next steps for them to take? Right. Uh, so there's depending on the agency that you're working with, sometimes you will actually even be charged for the phone calls as a franchisee, if you can believe that. Uh, in other scenarios, you might have uh, you know only availability for a quarterly call. Uh, ideally, you'll have someone who's available to you on a monthly basis. Not right. always necessary, but they're available. But they're available. You know, it's calls. there for you. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. You know, what would what would you say your conversation looks like with your with your ideal client? What, what's that conversation like for you, trying to get them jump started? Hey, I'm consumer Joe. I don't. I'm, I'm Joe's Plumbing. I don't know anything about digital marketing, but I'm gonna give you. Twenty five hundred dollars a month. All right. Well, first thing I'd actually say, oh, back up, back up. Do you even need digital marketing? I know right. that's a funny thing for me to ask. Right. But uh, I've heard stories of franchisees that have succeeded with local marketing. Right. Where they just simply went around a neighborhood, uh, and they said, "Hey, come to my come to my barbecue." And uh, th- this franchisee closed eighty thousand dollars in business in the flooring industry uh, simply by going door to door. And it's important for me to preface: digital marketing plays a role in with the rest of your marketing if you only look at it from the lens of i need digital marketing well why do you need digital marketing right do you need more leads do you need more brand exposure do you need people to actually like know the difference between you and your competition if those are if those are things that you need okay digital marketing can play a role in that but i actually take a step back uh not everyone's the right customer for digital marketing right uh budget's part of it but uh i also have a philosophy that hey if you're doing like take my business for example i'm technically growing through referrals right uh do you you have to spend advertising dollars to get that customer. Maybe you do. Right. But what, let's evaluate that. Right. And let's find out if the budget fits in your overall uh, all marketing plan. Right. So I would say, oh, I think we're highlighting one differentiator with Craig Ads. And I do have Floor Coverings International to thank for some of this experience. Right. Uh, I would have to say that looking at digital as it fits into the business model and building a marketing plan and also explaining to, uh, or, or uh, strategizing together on uh, what's that right path forward. Right. You know, digital marketing is one piece of that. What's your close rate for the leads that you're receiving? That's a piece to it. Right. What's your slippage? Right. Uh, which is, you know, if somebody calls and doesn't turn into an appointment for your business. Okay, right. that's a slipped lead. Right. Uh, what's the cost of that, right? So if I just start off, okay, willy-nilly, $2,500 budget, mm-hmm. but you've got bad slippage, you got bad close rate, at the end of six months to a year or sooner, you're canceling your services. Right. Because you're not actually not, your your perceived value in marketing is much, much less. Than what you than what you actually think you're getting yeah. out of it. So, uh, so I know I know I sell digital marketing, and that's the primary of what I sell. Right. But in order to help with digital marketing, there's a lot of things that we do to add value so that you can get the most out of digital. Here's right. how digital marketing fits into your business. That's and awesome. here's how your business fits into what we're providing to you. That's awesome. So you're like the boutique for digital marketing. You kind of uh, give that give that approach where you're, you're very agnostic to what you're we doing. Are, we like... are the boutique, but we're, we are also very affordable. Right. Uh, maybe to my detriment. <laughs> 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 but, but currently, our pricing is very effective for uh, for that local business owner.
counter such that they have more ad spend that yeah. they can utilize. Uh, one of the ways that we help is by diversifying all the channels. We include direct mail mm -hmm. along with other digital marketing channels such as video, advertising, right. display, search. Um, but uh, we try to have a very effective service fee that allows them to diversify and to have a little bit of budget into each of those channels. And then what would you say that each, you know, like all of your services would be like, what is all the services that you, you know, that you, uh, God almighty, I can't even <laughs> so, think of the word. It's yeah, a lot. sell for people or that you, that you're, that you're giving to a consumer. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but to name those off very quickly, yeah. Pinterest, Spotify, TikTok, Facebook, Google Ads, Google Display, YouTube, search engine optimization, website, and I'm probably missing some. You build uh, websites SEO. as well? Yes, we also build websites. Okay. So what's what's uh, interesting is obviously Craig Ads is yeah. the name. We are passionate about advertising. Uh, and that means that when we're looking at a website, we're doing so so that we can run ads on right. that site. Right. Uh, and oftentimes we come across clients that uh, do not have the ideal scenario for ad traffic to land on. Right. Um, so what we often offer is low cost or no cost websites mm -hmm. where normally we have a month to month agreement for advertising, just standalone. Right. Uh, stay on for six months or 12 months, depending on the size of the, and scope of the site. Mm -hmm. the site's free. Yeah. But uh, you're doing advertising with us for six months to a year. That's a killer deal. I mean, that's you trade what's free. You know what I mean? They're they're wanting advertisement, yeah. and if they stay with you, I mean, you get a free website. That's a some people pay really good money to have websites. Now. Right. So for me, it's about the ongoing relationship. I care more about that than just a standalone project. Here, five thousand dollars. Let's build you a website. Right. Okay. Cool. Now, now what? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> right. I, now I'm scared to call Craig. Now. You right. Know? Right. I've paid five thousand dollars. Now what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, oh, SEO. Now that's gonna be two thousand a month. So now I'll pay for click. Okay, that's gonna be another five hundred dollars a month. Right. You know. Um, so instead, we try to roll that together. Uh, and by the way, those two amounts I just said, two thousand five hundred, we're typically well below that. Yeah. Uh, with our packages. Um, but yeah, if we stay, if we're staying ongoing with a franchisee or a local business owner, that's right. usually the best uh, scenario. So and then for your reach for your business, you know, because um, I know we, we all, we've been talking a lot about local, but, you know, is your reach nationwide? What, what, mm -hmm. where, all can you, where are you helping people out? Most of my businesses today are local in Georgia. However, there are local businesses uh, and also on the franchising side throughout the U.S. So I've had businesses in Texas, locations in New York. Locations okay, so you, got, in... you, you, can put your, you can put your hand in all the cookie jars, all 50 of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that, that's, that's, what I, that's what I was wondering because I didn't – didn't really know if y'all had like leeway and whatnot if you know right. if, if they have to be marketed through certain places you know like credit card processing we can process anywhere pretty much anywhere in the world as long as they got a u.s based bank so i didn't know if it was very similar yeah, so that, or not. we're not in canada we're not in other parts of the world just in the u.s but uh anywhere in the u.s we can basically yeah. service that's awesome so and then what would you do really well when you first started you know it could have been the sales being able being able to talk to the people or was it just so I hang my hat on pay-per-click advertising. If it's something that I'm managing, that's going to be that's going to be really important for any fundamental for any business. It's going to be capturing people through search. Right. The second thing I would hang my hat on would be diversification. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that that's uh, well, you Craig, that's making you a jack of all trades. Well, yeah. no, that's that's the point. Uh, you do need to diversify in what you're doing with your Mil marketing. Million percent. And uh, if you're only in one channel or only two channels, well, you're only going to be seen on those two channels. Right. Uh, and those ads are going to get stale. You're going to have to change out the ad copy at some point. Right. Um, but if you're diversified in your many places, it's about targeting that right person everywhere they go throughout the journey. Right. They need to see you upwards of probably 10 to 30 touch points uh, in order for them to turn into a sale. Right. Now, that could be a sales process. I know you've, Absolutely, you've done sales. Mine, uh, mine is anywhere from three to three to five. Three to five, well, three to seven is to be yeah. safe. It's about my touches to get and, a sale. And sometimes, what were the touch points that led up to them talking to you? Just touch points of having one to one with them or right. sitting down, asking them what I could do for them to grow their business, not even asking them about the sale point. And then finally, it's either I asked them straight up, I was like, hey, can you do this? Or they're like, right. man, I think, I think you could help me. And I'm like, but I also you can guarantee that, uh, just uh, talking up your SIP event that's at the Governor's Gun Club, yeah. I can guarantee there's a member there that needs to come there 10 times, yeah. and then they're going to finally talk to MP Group about... No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There's people that come all the time and like, yeah. ah, we don't, we're don't, we not doing paint brushes with you guys right now. And I'm like, you you come to our event, you've been coming to it for four years now, you know, what, what, what's stopping you now? Like, you know us, you know we're going to do you right, you come to all our stuff, like, even if it's not there, you come to right. our Cedar Crest Business Association, anything like that. But it's just... 
part of the process. You just got to get there, and it's at the right time. Sometimes it's people's timing. You never and you never know because I mean, you can go out and hard sell them and try to flip them, but right. you know this as well as I do. It's it's we can't control what they're thinking. We can try to. Well, you can't control the situation in their business if they're not in pain. You're not gonna have a sale. Absolutely not. At and the end then, of the day, and they, if they're not in pain, you better have a really good relationship with them. Yeah, and if, so that, that's why also with marketing, if uh, you know, selling marketing to someone. Uh, how are you doing in your business? Well, I'm actually relatively comfortable sales wise. I'm making X amount per month. Right. I'd like to make another ten grand more than what I'm making per month right now. Right. Okay. How important is that to you? Eh, it's kind of important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you're probably not interested in spending three thousand dollars a month on Google right. Ads, if you're trying right? to make an extra ten grand, yes. <laughs> right. And so with digital marketing, you know, especially. Coming out of you, coming out of school, when you probably graduated, what, 2011, 12? Uh, 2012. 2012 yeah. from, from USC. So when you graduated, you know, digital marketing it probably just became a thing. Like, where it was like... <laughs> Where it was I'm not like that old. Where, where it was like getting where it was getting like hot on the press though, you know, where it was like first like becoming like a real viable right. business to where people like were like holy shit, this is actually something that can make me a lot of money. But probably even four years before that, or even four years before that, because we were talking, um, you know, birth of the internet is in the nineties, right? Yeah. So early two thousands. I'm still uh, I'm still a kid in early two thousands now. To be fair, we still had those printers with the little rollers that yeah. pulled up the, the the sheet. So I mean, yeah, okay. So that's we're getting dated when we go back to that period. But uh, really, ever since Google really took got to the head of the pack, right. that's when the start of that era was. Right. So that's actually been for quite a while now. Yeah, probably, uh, so, the last yeah. probably fifteen years. Yeah, so it's gonna be and a good. And I was while. about to say, and then real realistically, like your, all your social media outlets didn't take off till 2015, 2014, 15, where they got really Face- big. Facebook took off when I graduated from high school. Now, Facebook was off, but it, it, whenever it got massive, whenever it yeah. became the conglomerate company it is now. Right so, funny, funny story about that. I was not on Facebook, and I actually still don't use Facebook a lot other than for advertising, for business, uh, for business purposes. But uh, I remember sitting in high school graduation, and this girl named Crystal, and we were doing a graduation ceremony practice. Yeah. And I said something about Facebook. I don't even remember what. And Crystal turned around and said, Craig, you're literally living in a shell you need to get on facebook right now <laughs> that's literally what she did and <laughs> to this day i'm like okay i am living in and, a shell. and, then, okay. and look at it nowadays yeah. you know now it's been well now it's now sold it's... bought owned now everything you get on there is all digital like there every third post you see is somebody advertising something like where it's being pushed you know what i mean they paid that 7.99 to get it pushed or whatever they do through right. through there but then it, then your tiktoks your instagrams you know that's mm-hmm. something i see nuance of people like mine and Scott's age behind the camera or behind the computer over there like that something that people go in and they're like this is how we made a hundred thousand dollars doing digital marketing or whatever like this in a month and I'm like what how? I'm like is that real like you know what I mean it, it depends on the business model it right. depends on the use case uh and that's important to note like I'm not going to turn on all 15 channels that I provide to a to a business right uh for, for example if I'm a cleaning business I'm not necessarily doing Pinterest ads Right. Right. Uh, but if I am an epoxy flooring business, yes, and uh, it's a very visual service, mm-hmm. okay, Pinterest might actually be a viable channel to be on there. Right. Uh, so, yeah. And it's just kind of knowing those pain points, and then what what is your conversation like to find those pain points? Uh, well, I'd be asking you about what are you doing currently on your marketing? Are you doing direct mail? Are you doing digital? What has your experience been with that? And right. uh, get your feedback on how that current vendor is doing. The typical pain points that I hear from a current vendor are vendors that aren't available for phone calls okay. or vendors that uh, talk a big game and then you know, over time, lead results continue to go down after they initially start. Right. Um, and I'd say the biggest thing for somebody to look out for when working with another vendor would be look at the ad spend versus the service fee. Uh-huh. Uh, I just talked to another epoxy flooring business just a couple days ago, and they said to me they're paying $3,000 for their service fee and then $3,000 for Facebook ads. I will teach you to do Facebook ads. Don't on pay your three. Own. Th- <laughs> yes. 
I will teach it to you. You could have the biggest push on Facebook of all time. A yes. month. So you have a, you'd have a million views a month that you so paid for. General rule is try at the very least have the service fee be less than whatever it is you're paying for the advertising spend. Right. Uh, and service fee should be something realistic. It should not be. You know, I would recommend fifty percent. It'd probably be if you are a percentage of spend vendor. Yeah. It should be less than fifty percent. Uh, and that number is going to be land differently depending on the vendor. Right. Uh, but uh, man, oh man, uh, if you're again, if your service fee is well beyond the ad spend, the chance of you getting the ROI that you're looking for is just that much harder. Right. And then so and saying service fee is being a ha- you know you saying fifty percent. How can you how do you know like what a service fee should be with a client? Because I know it's different for each people, right. but. Some of these people you can put out and they can jump off and go. You know what I mean? And you don't have to service them. They just call you like every mm-hmm. quarterly and be like, hey, Craig, you know, just checking in. Can you change this for us? And you're like, yeah, right. I got you. Right. But, you know, if you don't have to touch them for three months, for two and a half months, you know, that's a that's So good. that's not an ideal customer. An ideal customer actually wants to engage with us th- uh, every 30 days. And okay. The, and the reason why I say that is uh, it does require ongoing changes. During that hour, I could see here's, here's the difference. You have your uh, assembly line. Henry Ford model, where you have multiple people, each with d- separate tasks, versus kind of like a real estate agency. And maybe right. that comes from when I was working at uh, Commercial Brokers International. Uh, that that agency model really stuck with me. Mm-hmm. That agent owns the relationship and owns the strategy from start to finish. Right. Well, I can accomplish what that assembly line accomplishes in that single hour right. once per month. Especially because it's just you doing it, so you know the information that's coming in and out. There's no red tape. There's no following up with an operations team member that thinks, well... No I, telephone game. Yeah, and, and when you play the telephone game, well, I like this part of the strategy, but uh, you know, I think I'm going to do this differently. And then, Well, I just told the client I'm going to do... You don't have any of that... No, you just have anything in that nature. The the person who takes extreme ownership of that though is the account manager. So while there will be people who support that account manager for Craig Ads, right? Uh, the buck stops with the account manager. If you got the results, great. If you didn't get the results, well, that's still on you. It's right. just like a salesperson. Right. You know, you got to deliver on on your uh, based on performance. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so, but by centralizing the command structure to that point person that's talking to the client, yeah. there's a couple of requirements of that person, an ideal candidate to work at. Craig ads. By the way, this is also going to be looking for people. This is Craig that... sales pitch to, for you guys out there that want to be hired. We, Craig ads is growing. We're getting. I'm not there yet, but we're scaling to a point where we need to add account managers. Uh, when we get to that point, that account manager has to be a highly paid to individual. They right. have to be well trained. They have to actually right. be dangerous in digital. Right. Maybe not all of it, but they need to be dangerous in a lot of it. And they need to be able to own the strategy from start to finish. Right. So that means uh, for me, my margins as the owner is much much smaller. I basically am have. Having many business owners right. serving business owners. Right. That's the strategy. But that's also a great way to build your business because then yeah. it makes people invest into you just as much as you're investing your time into them. Right. But imagine if I didn't talk to that customer <laughs> for six months. I could have all the strategy in the world, mm-hmm. but if I didn't have that comp- that monthly call. Then you have no idea what, where, where, the, where to put the where strategy. Are, where yeah. are we? Did where you we get gonna... enough leads? Were they good leads? What type of leads did you get? Oh, they were all crap. Oh, they were all, right. you know. What, <laughs> it's what like I... walking into the conversation that you've been listening to half halfly and then you walk back and you're like, Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. Go, you got to go back into that part right there. Right. You know, and you don't want to do that because then you feel like you're burdening that person or then they're then yep. they're looking at you like, come on, dude, like, where you been at? You know, we yep. needed you. But no, what is, um, you know, especially for you, because you went from the, you know, from the commercial, or commercial, from the real world into being an entrepreneur um, into our own little world. Right. But, you know, what was it like? What's that, what's that journey been like burning the ship? Uh, well, I took a very uh, interesting uh, time. I chose a, a very interesting time to start a business, uh, and that's because, unfortunately, my dad passed away from pancreatic cancer. Uh, that was in that was just as the business was getting its legs. So that was in uh, January of twenty three. Was when the business was unofficially starting. It was about May, oh, sorry, April is when my dad passed away. And it's about April, May is when the business was starting. Mm-hmm. At that same time, I made the decision to move to Carrollton. At this, uh, so I was moving while all that was happening. Uh, and then also, uh, 
my wife was pregnant with Claire, <laughs> or actually, Claire actually might have already been born. <laughs> now it's actually blurry a little bit, but yeah. So we had all of those things going at the same time, uh, which uh, okay, and we got the phone call happening. Uh, but yeah, we had all that happening at the same time, which uh, it's amazing, right? That it all worked out the way it did. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to my wife, <laughs> who was very patient with me during that time right. uh, as we got that business started. Uh, how did I do it? Uh, it was definitely team effort and from a from a mom and dad standpoint. Right. Uh, and it was uh, also just doing the late nighters and, and working on those franchisees or those uh, local businesses. Man, that is awesome. So I've, I met you in your early in your entrepreneurial journey too. Then. Yes, you did. Which, so I was uh, super awesome because I yeah. whenever I first met you, I could, I, told, I could tell you were sharp. You could tell whenever you see somebody stand up and there's like a little light bulb over their head because <laughs> it just it's infectious personality. That's so you too, Ezra. That's infectious personality yeah. when you're smiling and you're talking to people going around just being craig you know what i mean just don't give a shit what anybody thinks i'm out here being me <laughs> that's it's it stands out and people can tell that and it's it's right. awesome that's why I, I took a liking to you right when i met you so i was like i'm, I'm definitely gonna like this dude so tell the people where to find you uh so you can go to craigads.com and yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. but no uh burn the ship burn the ship and uh I, craig i appreciate you coming to sit down with us thanks ezra thank you thank you